Hey, what's up guys? We're gonna make this a... some things I like about this mower and maybe some things I don't like about it. Uh, we'll call it a 10 hour review and we're also gonna do an oil change, get the break-in oil out and put some good full synthetic oil in it. Um, but a few things I do like about it is it mows really nice, it's smooth, it, the steering's light on it, um, it turns sharp, so that helps get around things. And the only thing I really had to compare it to was my old 96, I believe it was, Husqvarna. So this is, you know, along with the times, it, a bit more advanced, but it's still a, it's still a mower, you know. It can only get so good, I guess. But uh, I did... A couple things I had to do is I moved these scalping wheels down one hole and then the deck, I'd say probably around the fifth or sixth hour, I started noticing it mowing just a little bit to one side. So I did take and adjust, oh, where's it at? Right in here. I adjusted these um, adjusting nuts, just maybe like two or three threads to get the, the deck aligned back up. Um, but other than that, I haven't had any issues with it. Um, there's probably only one thing that I don't like about it is I guess I'm not heavy enough. So it likes to cut and stall out. I guess these springs are really, really stiff down here. So whenever I've had hit like a bump in the yard, I get to bouncing. And the engine will kind of want to half cut out and come back on then cut out and come back on. Um, that's the only real issue, and you know, you can go and probably do something with disconnecting the, the seat switch down here. I don't know, I never really looked into it. But then you get rid of the, the safety of that, where if you fall off, you have a runaway machine, I don't know. I mean, it could happen, I guess. But yeah, that's about the only thing I don't like about it. But other than that, it's been good. Been good so far. We're at, we'll call it a 10 hour review but we're at about 11 hours i believe let's see yeah 11.3 all right what i'm gonna do is pull it in the garage now and we'll get this oil out of it put some fresh in it i'll show you what i got all right here we are so i already pulled the hood off hood comes off easy you just unplug your led lights there and then the hood just simply slips down right into those two notches. You just pull up on the hood and it'll pull right out. Um, but when you buy the tractor, you get your manual and a few other goodies here. But it comes with this hose. But I did modify the hose a little bit so it would have the bend to it that you see. That way it's not straight. Because when I put on here, it's going to be straight. And then it's going to want to almost hit the tire. And it won't hit the little drain pan I have down there. So all I did was take an old um, clothes hanger, cut it, and just put some electrical tape on it and bend it. That'll give you the 90 degree angle. That way we can set it on here and it'll go right down to my drain hose, or my drain pan. But as far as changing oil, it's going to be simple. Let's just pop the dipstick up. That way it can vent. And then your hose, you pull this black cap off. Stick the hose on. Giving this a little bit more of a bend here. I'm going to go down into my pan. And this is just a, it's just an old antifreeze jug that I cut the top off of. It holds one gallon. Okay, we got our hose on. Got our pan underneath. So all we're going to do is pull it out on it. And there we go. We got some oil flowing. I already started draining it, and the record button didn't record, so there we are. That's all you got to do. Oil is draining. Oil filter. You just get yourself some filter pliers. Turn this guy to the left, and then I'm not sure. Sometimes they're going to leak out and make a mess. I'm not going to spin it off here right now just in case I do miss my pan down there. I'm going to pause the video and take it off that way I can catch the oil if it's gonna spill.
All right, yeah, I did need two hands for that because he did take it. When I did take a filter off, it did want to make a mess and run down there into that little pan that I put. Um, but yeah, if I didn't have two hands, I'd have oil all over the machine. So be ready for that when you take the filter off of a mess. Um, you want when you take the filter off, you do want to make sure the gasket comes off with it, and then you want to look up and wipe clean the uh, where the gasket will touch. The mating surface there. You want to wipe that down, make sure it's clean, free of debris. And well, anyway, this is the oil change kit that I did get, the 300 hour kit. I'll put um, a picture up of what this kit will fit, and then also the manual showing that you can go 300 hours on this. Will I go 300 hours? Probably not. I won't have an issue going 200, you know. But I don't know. We'll see what the oil looks like. Whenever I hit the 200 hour mark. Um, but with this kit. Right there's your part number. Well with this kit you're going to get. Two quarts of oil. And your oil filter. It was $45. And yeah the upfront cost is more. But. To not need to change oil often. And not even think about it. Until I'm up over 200 hours. That'll be great. So you just take some oil. And you're going to want to. Prime your filter. Fill this guy up first. Then just let it sit and soak up the oil for a minute. Then just take a little drop of that and make sure you put it around the gasket area here before you spin it on the tractor. That way it won't glue itself tight and you have a bear of a time getting it off next time and he's done. Okay, after we got our filter primed, gasket lubed, we can take and spin him on. Spin it on right there until the gasket touches. And then after the gasket touches, you only want to give it maybe three quarters of a turn to a full turn to tighten it. Anything more than that, you're going to over tighten it. And you're going to have a hard time getting it off next time. So there, that's about one full turn, close to a full turn. And it, it's plenty tight. It's not going to go anywhere. Not coming off. We look down. We got our oil dripping. So that's perfect. It's all drained out. We can get the refill in it. Close up your drain plug. You just simply want to push it in and turn it to the right to lock it there. That way it can't go anywhere. And you can go and pull go ahead and pull your hose off. And there's probably gonna be a couple drips. Just let him drip down the pan or set him to the side somewhere. And make sure you recycle your old oil. I have a garage I give all my oil to in town, and they love it because that's how they heat in the wintertime. Is used oil. Alright, put a black cap back on, drain plugs in. Filter's tight. So, manual says this calls for a quart and a half. So, I'm going to go ahead and dump probably about one and a quarter quarts in it. And then, I'll check it. And go from there. Because you don't want to overfill it. But, it should at least take one and a quarter if the manual says one and a half. So, we'll just do the one and a quarter first and check it before we start. Got our one in. Now we'll put in close to our half. Yeah, that'll be good. We'll put that much in. And we'll take our funnel out, put our dipstick back in, make sure it's clipped down the whole way. And then start it up and let it run for about a minute or two and check for leaks. Then we're going to recheck our oil again after we get the oil circulated through the whole engine. Okay, we got our dipstick down and clipped on. Let's give it a start and let it circulate. Now we go to shut off. 
We're just going to let it sit another minute or two. Make sure the oil all gets settled back into the bottom. Then from there we can take our dipstick out, give it a wipe, and then make sure it's in the safe area. Since we did, we're a little shy with the one and a half quarts, I imagine I will have to put a couple drips in it to get it topped off the whole way. But we'll see here in a second. Okay, it's been sitting a couple minutes. Got the dipstick pulled out and wiped off, and we are on a level surface. You don't want to be doing it on any incline or decline or to the side. So now we're just going to check our oil level, make sure we have enough in it. Let's see where it's at here. Oh, it's exactly at the exactly at the second dot. It's going to be hard to tell because it's so clean on camera. Yeah, so that was a little bit shy of a quart and a half. That was would have been a quart and this one's down to 20 ounces so is that a quart and about 12 ounces so almost a quart and a half so we have that since it can go you know says 300 hours but like i said we'll check and see what the oil looks like in between um we have 20 ounces here for top off if we would need to in the next 300 hours but yeah, that's it. There's no need for you guys to send these out and get them, get them serviced. You've seen how simple it was. You can service it yourself. I do like to write on the filter when it was done. That way you always know. All right, guys. I think that's going to be it for this video. So if it helped you out, give me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. All right, guys. Other than that, I'm out. Peace.